For many businesses, AI automation sounds like a dream come true. Imagine eliminating repetitive tasks and receiving fresh insights from generative AI effortlessly. But how do you turn that dream into a reality for your company? The key lies in preparing your workflows effectively for automation and AI. And that's what we're diving into today. Hi, I'm Tom from X-Ray Tech, the workflow company. At X-Ray, we empower our members and clients to create more time for their teams with low-code automation and AI. To learn more about how we can help companies like yours, visit our website at xray.tech. To see more automation tips and tutorials every week, like this video, subscribe to our channel, and turn on notifications so you don't miss a new way to save time. In this video, I'm going to briefly explain how automation and AI combine to streamline your work. Then I'll cover how you need to prepare your data to support a process with automation and AI. Let's jump into it. First, let's talk about how AI has improved the world of no-code, low-code automation. Generative AI, like the models we see from OpenAI and Anthropic, has added an entirely new dimension to automated workflows. Workflow automation with tools like Zapier and Make has always been able to do a lot, but on the flip side, it's always been limited in its ability to synthesize or create information. Without using AI, everything has to be formulaic. For instance, you can easily run mathematical calculations in your zaps and scenarios that plug your automated inputs into a predefined algorithm. It's also simple to carve out variables in a pre-composed paragraph or block of text. Basically, you can turn any text into a sort of Mad Lib if Mad Libs were focused entirely on business processes. All of this is very useful, but clearly falls short of creating new and unique content. Introducing generative AI opens up brand new possibilities to create original content with your automations. Using Zapier and Make, you can send prompts to AI asking to summarize or transform content or draft something entirely new. For example, let's say you have a simple automation that alerts you with a Slack message whenever a new file is added to a certain Google Drive folder. With Zapier, Drive, and Slack alone, that is to say no AI whatsoever, you can retrieve a lot of information about that file from Drive. You can get the file's name, its URL, the owner, and even a plain text file of the Google Doc, and many other variables too. But with AI, you could also send a prompt to ChatGPT to summarize this doc, or even ask for notes on how to improve it. Data like that plain text variable we mentioned earlier will come in handy for this. Even without AI, workflow automation is a powerful strategy for eliminating robotic work, creating more time for your team. But with AI, your automations can become even better. Not only can they move and transform your data based on formulaic rules, but they can also use the creative capabilities of AI to synthesize and generate new content. However, not every process is immediately ready for automation and AI. Next, let's take a look at what your company needs to do to prepare a workflow for automation and AI enhancements. First and foremost, if you want to automate a process, it has to be repeatable and consistent. That means the process needs to be conducted the same way every time and needs to have well-structured, consistent data. Here's why that's important. Even when you're working with no-code apps like Zapier and Make, you're still working with software. It's just abstracted a little bit more so you don't need to type out the functions and syntax yourself. But all software requires specific instructions to run properly. In the case of automation, that means you need to define a few things. You need to have a clear trigger event. When does the process start and when should the automation start running? Then you need to define specific actions for the automation to perform following that trigger. Each action will involve specific inputs and outputs to process data correctly. And you'll often need to include branching paths or other logic to accommodate variations in the process. If you don't have a process mapped out in enough detail to provide all of this information, then you're probably not ready to automate it just yet. You won't have a clear blueprint of what to build, which will make it extremely difficult to create an effective automation and get your team to adopt it. If you create an ad hoc process, just for the sake of building an automation right away, you might end up codifying a bad or ineffective process that won't help the people at your company. Instead, it's better to develop a consistent manual process with your team first. Once it's running the way you need it to, document it and start building automations to support it. For instance, let's say you want to tighten up and automate your employee onboarding process. If you don't have a consistent way that you run onboarding, it won't be useful to add automation into the mix. You don't want to automatically assign an incomplete list of tasks to your new hire or send them half-baked reference material. Once you define the process and confirm that it works for your team by running it manually for a little while, then you can automate it. Basic employee onboarding automations might look something like this. 
The automations, which could be built with a provider like Zapier or Make, launch when an employee's status is set to begin onboarding in an Airtable base, for example. Then, the employee is invited to join the relevant Slack channels and shared on key documents in Google Drive. The automation emails key materials to the new employee's work email, like your company's handbook. After that, onboarding tasks are assigned to the new employee in your task management tool of choice and notifications are sent in Slack so your whole team is aware. At the same time, the new employee's supervisor gets assigned tasks to conduct training. After the onboarding period ends in two weeks, another automation wraps this process up by sending a feedback survey to the newly onboarded employee. Note that the value of this automation relies heavily on the quality of the documents and tasks involved. If you're not happy with your company's handbook, or if you're not quite sure what tasks to assign, all this automation is going to do is send out information that still needs to be improved. In other words, your onboarding automation is only going to be as good as the materials it processes. Until you've defined all of the critical assets you need for a successful onboarding, the juice just isn't worth the squeeze to automate it. This is why you want to work out the kinks manually in the process before automating it. But once you've done that, you can save a bunch of time and avoid errors by automating every step you can. If you'd like to learn more about designing a workflow automation like this step-by-step, step, then consider signing up for our workflow design course. Launching later this year, the course will include over two hours of video content demonstrating how to plan, design, build, and deliver automated workflows. You can learn more about the course at course.xray.tech and join the waiting list for free today. Now let's return to the topic of AI. Ultimately, similar criteria apply when you want to enhance an automated process with AI. Before you add an AI prompt to your automated workflows in Zapier or Make, you need to make sure that you have a relatively consistent prompt that you want to run the same way every time. When you're using a chatbot interface like ChatGPT manually to ask spontaneous questions, there's no need to be consistent. You can summarize text files sometimes or just copy and paste text directly into the chatbot other times. Generally, it doesn't make much of a difference. But if you want to automate that prompt into a zap or make scenario, you need to know exactly where all that data that you feed into your prompt will actually come from. This is because each piece of data has to be defined as a variable in your automation. In many cases, you'll find that automating a process creates clean, organized data that's perfect for feeding into an AI prompt, even if you weren't originally thinking about using AI at all. For instance, let's revisit our employee onboarding example. Just by running the simple automation I outlined earlier, you'd have a bunch of consistently structured data to compile a ChatGPT prompt. In Airtable, you'd have the data about which tasks have been completed and when. You'd also have the new employee's survey responses to every question. With that data, you could set up an automation that sends the user's responses to AI for sentiment analysis or to discover other insights you might not have noticed by reviewing it yourself. The beauty of adding automation and AI together is that you can easily add variables to your prompts so they have a similar structure every time, but different specific data points. Without automating the process first, you'd have to manually look up the data and enter it into your prompt. This sort of process might be worth it while you're fine tuning your prompt, but once you've figured out the instructions you want to send, it's much more efficient to run it all automatically. So if you want to start enhancing your workflow with AI, Try taking the same approach that you would if you wanted to automate the process in general. Make each step as consistent and repeatable as possible, and make sure that you're creating clean and well-structured data that you can easily plug into your prompt. As AI continues to disrupt industries across the board, it's more important than ever to find effective ways to leverage it so your company can get ahead of the competition. If you're not sure where to start, then just begin by documenting a process and preparing it for automation. Automating a process naturally leads to better opportunities to integrate AI into your workflows, creating clean, consistent data that connects seamlessly to your prompts. If you've enjoyed this video, prove you're human, like and subscribe for more automation tips every single week. If you'd like to learn more about low-code automation and workflow design, follow us on LinkedIn, Twitter, or Facebook, and you can find all of our content on our website at xray.tech. You can find all those links in the X-Ray Workflow Resources board down below, and as always, find your focus and stay in flow.